Much has happened with the prosecution of Brian Koberger for the death of four University of Idaho students in Moscow, Idaho. We covered the hearing from February 28th, catching up on what was going on in Idaho, including that court hearing. Part of the court hearing in Idaho was over whether or not the court would allow the defense to have to make and to hear a change of venue motion. The prosecution argued that that motion was premature, that the change of venue motion can't really come up until you start assembling a veneer or a pool of jurors to come in and start asking them questions. The prosecution in Idaho argued that you can't really know if you need to change venue or move the trial somewhere else when you haven't even started pulling in jurors yet because you can't know how exposed the jury pool is to this. And the case isn't really set to start. We don't have a trial date yet, but it's not going to start be before the summer or at least late spring 2025. So you not only are in a, a mostly college town, you're more than a year out from the trial date. What the jurors think now and what the jurors might think later is vastly different. So this is really the type of thing you need to hear closer in time to picking a jury when you actually start picking a jury. I agree with the prosecution in this because some of the people that live there now might not live there in the summer of 2025. You have people that will become 18 and become eligible jurors in the summer of 2025. Between now and then, who knows how many of them. You have people that might be home for the summer because you are in a college community. Like a snapshot of the community now gives you no indication of what this community might look like when this trial starts. Also, the defense, I think, has argued quite a lot that this case is the trial of the century everybody wants theirs to be. And it has so much international media attention. Well, if it has that much attention, moving it from this location to that location in Idaho might not necessarily change anything. And I wonder if the defense is trying to force this because it seems that the defense has been sending out questionnaires to potential jurors in the area now to try to support their motion, which I don't think you can do. I've never seen it happen. So we're going to look at that together. The prosecution went, it, uh, ex your honor, excuse me, the defense is contacting potential jurors. They can't do that to support their motion. So what is even happening? So today we have a fleet of motions over this issue. Is the defense through their expert contacting jurors or potential jurors in an improper way to support the motion that is too early for them to make. If the defense starts contacting jurors now, by the time you get to picking a jury pool, they're going to be like, I have heard of this case because you sent me a questionnaire to my home. So they might be proving the point with the things that they're doing now. So the prosecution's pissed. The defense is pissed. We have motions for a state's order prohibiting contact with prospective jurors and we have a defense motion to rescind a court order. Those are the two motions that we're working on. We have 10 filings to go through. Are you ready? In the 10 filings in Idaho, it is very clear that the defense has completed 400 telephone surveys of the residents of Lataw County asking them about this case in support of their motion for change of venue. It also became very clear that the state was unaware that this was happening, that the state had no input on the questions that were being asked, and the court was unaware of this. The state, in one of their motions, indicated that there will be a hearing on this matter on April 4th, 2024, and I am fascinated to see what the court has to say. The court issued an order the day that the state brought this to the court's attention, saying that neither party can have any contact with prospective jurors but the shit's already out of the horse on that one because all the 400 surveys in Lataw County are complete. The only reason the state knows about this is because members of the public who were contacted brought it to the state's attention. And it became clear that more than four people came to the state and said they were being contacted, disclosed the types of questions they were being asked, and one resident of the county recorded the phone survey when they were called. It's going to be very interesting to see what the court does with this because the defense did not have the court's permission 
generally when we see surveys happen in cases, the input is from the state, the defense, and the court. The defense argued that this is all very normal and maybe y'all are unaware, but we know what we're doing. We have to survey the jurors to make our motion for change of venue. The prosecution says this looks like it's violating the non-dissemination order and there are concerns that now that this information is being asked, that it is now given information to the jurors or potential jurors in Latah County. And thus, it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy that maybe there wasn't an issue before, but now that this survey has been done with 1% of the residents of the county, that there is an issue. But either way, you generally see a change of venue motion, and this is what the state argued at the last hearing, you generally see a change of venue motion with information from juror surveys that are sent out by the court. And those surveys are agreed upon by the defense and the prosecution. And if there are things that are not agreed, the court rules on it and then sends out the survey. It's very interesting to see this survey go out without prior court approval, which very much seems to be the case here. I'm very interested to see what Judge Judge has to say about all of this and how they can rectify the situation because there's not much the court is going to be able to do. If you change the venue because of the issue, then the defense has forced the error that they were seeking in the first place, which is a real interesting thing, isn't it? You're the best. Stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, Law Nerds. See you in the next one. For deep dives into the stories that I covered here, you can find them on my YouTube channel at The Emily D. Baker and The Emily Show Podcast. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The podcast goes live on Wednesdays. And if you want to stay in the loop with everything I'm doing, receive the fastest notifications out there and get more Law Nerd community, join me at lawnerdapp.com, our free app for iOS and Android. 